passionate instigator and dynamic problem solver, Dr. Kevin Ross Emery, the host of the Dr. Kevin Radio Show, will be taking you outside the box, behind the curtain, and identifying the load of BS we are fed every day. And now, Dr. Kevin. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Dr. Kevin Show here on Ohm Times, uh, where we're changing the world. Wait for it. One ohm at a time. Uh, so we want to welcome you into uh, again into our 2019. Uh, still pretty early uh, going on the uh, uh, going going into the year. So I'm sure some of you out there are still kind of sort of writing 2018 or thinking in 2018 terms, but it's 2019. Uh, we are waiting for tonight's guest to come in, but we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I know that tonight's guest just got in touch with me uh, just a couple of days ago uh, and uh, said that they uh, and uh, gave me the high sign that they were going to be here. So we are going to keep our eyes out for them. So everybody's pointing fingers. So let's start with that, shall we? Everybody is pointing fingers. And while they're pointing fingers, they are looking at each other, uh, saying, it's your fault. No, it's your fault. But as usual, the American people are getting the screw job in the process. Uh, and so we're going to start out with that hot topic. Uh, I'm also going to look because I've got uh, I've got a message coming in that I think might be from my guest, and I'm going to see if there is a problem. Hi, Dr. Kevin. It's 3:03, and just yeah. trying to reach you. So um, there we go. Have... Anyway, I thought we were on for three o'clock today. So just... okay, so I am going to be. Uh, I don't know why he's not calling the correct number, but uh, we're going to call him and we're going to invite him uh, to come into the show. This is a uh, this is a live call in show so he can call uh, and still get on the show. Uh, you know, it always amazes me and I'm going to say this while I'm trying to get our guest in that, you know, I create these packets and they say all over the place. This is another call. This is the time to call. These are the questions I'm going to ask. And then what happens? I don't know because that's not they, they don't call in. Uh, so we are calling in tonight's guest. You may be hearing this in the background. If not, I'm going to be inviting tonight's guest to uh, join us uh, on the number. You have reached nine four nine three five seven three one. And I'm getting a voicemail. At the tone, please record your message. And we're going to see if we get him to call in. Press one for more options. Hey, this is Dr. Kevin, uh, and uh, I'm not sure you you called me on uh, a number that I think is my business number on the Facebook page, but to be on the radio show, we're, we're, we're waiting your arrival, call 202-570-7057. That's 202-570-7057, and we are on air live, and we are waiting for you to join us. So hopefully you'll get this message and call in. So we'll see if tonight's guest calls in or not, but we're gonna we're gonna have a show whether they're here for this show or not, because that's the way we roll on the Dr. Kevin show. Uh, but I suspect that they're probably gonna pick that message up, and we will be hearing from them. So you know, I if we can try to sort of avoid getting too political in it, I am going to invite our listeners while we're waiting for our guests to come in and call in and say, what do you think the solution is? We've got 800,000 people that are not getting paid that we know of, then other people that are contractors that are not getting paid. We got, uh, we had less than half of them that were being made to work without getting paid, though they said they are now saying the pay will catch up with them. But that, you know what? A check next month doesn't pay last month's rent. Um, and uh, now what they're doing is instead of solving the problem, they're just calling more people in so the government can run without having to pay its employees because it's saying, well, you work for the government, so we can make you work for nothing and a promise of we'll pay you 
next week. Uh, I don't know. It reminds me a little bit of Popeye and Wimpy. And, you know, if I buy a hamburger this week, can I pay you for two next um, kind of thing? And, I, I, you know, there's a lot of different ideas or things floating around. But I'd like to listen to you here, our listeners, uh, about what you think we could be doing that would, A, avoid this in the future, uh, and B, bring to a stop to it now. Um, you know, again, everybody's pointing fingers, but I'm not sure that that's really getting anything done because fingers that are out. Uh, thank you. Rob. Hello. Hey. Hi. Hi. I owe you an apology. We have no reception in four corners of the house, and I've been trying to call for the last eight minutes. Oh, I, I, and it's so interesting because did you leave a call on another number? I sure did. I left two calls okay. at like 559 and 602, and it was a half for you, but it wasn't this number. So anyway, here we are. It's all good. You know what? We're all here. We're, uh, you know, one of the things that we do, um, and you're hearing tonight's guest, and we'll be introducing him in just a minute, but we're talking about my hot topic. And my hot topic is about the shutdown. And I know it's what everybody's talking about, um, uh, Rob Stefan. Do now, do you prefer to go by Robert or Rob? Rob sounds, a show. It sounds you know, articulate and educated. Rob <laughs> sounds articulate and educated? Okay. Um, is Rob articulate and educated? Just Depends curious. on the question. Depends on the question. <laughs> <laughs> so, Rob, um, we're talking about what would be, without making it into a political shit show conversation, which we'd like to avoid here on the Dr. Kevin Show, any solutions on how to bring this this, this shutdown to a close? I, I've been putting out for a while that I think that, you know, if we stopped paying all of Congress and all of the White House and all of the elected officials who are not getting the job done, if we stop paying them, maybe if we, we even find them for every day, that it wasn't settled. I think fines. I think we should find the people that are are messing with in excess of a million a million Americans' life by screwing around with their paycheck. I don't know. Do you have any thoughts? How do we end the shutdown? What do you think? I think we have to. I think we have to level the playing field where they're in the same book as anyone. I know when I didn't pay my on time, I was fine, and I know that, you know this. I think of these people make careers out of the original weren't designed. There's they should be subject to anything that the, the job does where, you know, uh, if I, so, um, okay. I don't know if our listeners are having a hard time hearing you. I know you're breaking up and I'm having a hard time hearing you. I don't know if there's a better corner you could try to wander to of your house because uh, I only heard about every th third word. And uh -huh. I'm, I'm pretty right. skilled at word games, but I don't know if I can fill in all of the blanks. No, the games. I, I have bars outside. I stay with the bars. So, um, can you hear me okay? That's a little better. That's a little better. Hopefully you're not standing on the edge of a mountain with one leg in tree pose and, uh, you know, uh, to get it. But hopefully that was Typically, a little better. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's how I'm doing it. Staying. So I'm just kidding. No, I shouldn't have that. <laughs> I think these. <laughs> oh, shoot. I got I went to one bar. I'll stay still. Um, these people are, are, are up and said that they're in it as a career. And I don't think that it was ever designed for them to be in Congress for a career. And so they don't, they don't want to upset that, uh, that, that stability. And I, I know if I, my phone bill on time, I get a fine. Or if something doesn't happen on time, I get a, you know, I get a fine. I think they should be treated like anybody else. So I, so you're, you're actually kind of sort of in line with me that there needs to be more accountability than just at the voting box. Cause you know, the voting box only shows up for some of these people every six years or every yeah. four years or whatever. And that there needs to be more built in incentive. Uh, <laughs> okay. 
That being said, I'm going to introduce tonight's uh, guest, uh, who is actor, director, Robert uh, Stefan. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correct. And he yes, is a have- renaissance... Mm-hmm. What? Good. You, yes, correct. Oh, good. Um, and he presents himself as a renaissance man in a digital age. That's a very interesting <laughs> thing. I do have to tell you that... One of my uh, early um, early books, uh, actually one of my early books of poetry, were called Thoughts from a Renaissance Man, favorite word of mine. Oh. He accomplished film, stage, television actor, author, and voiceover talent, Robert D. Steffen, who we're just going to call Rob, so he sounds articulate and intelligent, has appeared in over a dozen films, 22 plays, including the world's premiere of Timothy Mason's the Factorium as Michael Rockefeller. Damien Wright. Factotum. The... Factotum, sorry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, I need to put my glasses back on when I'm reading the screen, I guess. Factotum as Michael Rockefeller. Damien Wright's the Quadroon Ball at Mama yes, ECT. Yeah. Uh, Joe Pappas's public theater production of Othello, uh, along with Lee Schreiber and Keith David and opposite Bradley Cooper in the New uh, New York Fringe Festival. If you would like to find out more about him, you can go, uh, actually, I'm gonna let you guys know, you can uh, go to his Facebook page. Um, you can put it in and find it. Uh, and you can also come to facebook.com backslash mydrkevin, M-Y-D-R-K-E-V-I-N. Uh, like the page while you're there, because I'm a likable guy. Ask Rob, he'll tell you. Lie, Rob, lie. Um, <laughs> and uh, like my page, but you'll see Rob's brightly smiling face, a connection to his Facebook page, and more information to him there. You can also post questions if you'd like to be part of tonight's conversation, or you can call in because you are on live right now if you are listening in Thursday between 6 and 7 Eastern Standard Time, and you can call in at 202 202- 570-7057, and ask Rob or myself your questions directly. If you're listening to a replay, you can still go to the Facebook page, post your questions, and I will hunt Rob down, pick him up at the ankles, and shake the answers out. Is that okay, Rob? Yeah, and the answers are usually in the loose chain, so it'll be easy. <laughs> so... Uh... Rob, we're going to move into the the uh, magic part of the show, which is where I put you on the spot and we see how well you can tap dance. Um, All right, I'm ready. Good. So where would you like to take my listeners outside the box? Anything, anywhere, about anything you want, give it your best shot. Where would you like to stretch their comfort zones? Um... What's coming to mind is is a dual answer. The first one is kids right now that have uh, what we deem disabilities or are different. So I, so I want to take you outside of the box on what is actually different, what is actually normal. So normal I believe to be a relative term, and if a, if a kid is presenting themselves in the, in, in the world in a way that is unconventional, um, how is it a problem, and why is it valuable? That's how I'm taking you outside the box. (laughs) Well, um, you are in the right place for that conversation. You may or may not be aware I have several books out on ADD and ADHD. Uh, and this is a near and dear uh, subject to my heart. Uh, you know, I think part of it is, you know, we talk about the new normal. What's the new normal? What's the new next normal? You know, how do we broaden the term? How about if we just leave normal as, you know, I used to define normal as a, a social disease. And when you caught mm. it, if you didn't get rid of it, you might be alive, but you would be dead. Because, the yep, because no one is normal. Normal does not exist. Yeah. Normal is a fantasy um, that is promoted by people that wish to control you. Yeah. So yep. give me an example. 
So tell me, so you said you had a dual one, so we want to get to both sides of it, but where, where were your non-traditional ways of being, uh, being in the world? Where did, how did they play out in your childhood? And was it part of what led you to become an actor and a director? I think so. And um, the first part of the answer that I'll provide was I had a choice. And what that means is um, I was diagnosed with something called glycogen storage disease type 6 and um, basically had a, a liver biopsy and uh, to determine the cause of an enlarged liver. So consequently, uh, a level, I had an extended liver that looked like but the feedback that I got from adults and children were that I was pregnant, which is a biological impossibility, right? Well, so, as far as we know. Go ahead. Yeah, and, and it just, <laughs> I can laugh about it, right? I can laugh about it now. But at the time, you know, kids, a lot of times kids want to find something that they can relate to, whether it's, okay, I've got a gun, so I'm an army man, or I've got a, a dress, so I'm a princess, or Whatever the thing is, now I get to be this. Now I get to be that. And most of the time, kids want to be something that empowers them or gives them a sense of creativity and fun and play. And kids don't want to be – they don't want to identify with closed-minded, judgmental, critical people, nor do they want to be identified as something that is demasculating and derogatory uh, and not not even a possibility, right? So – my answer is that was kind of the beginning of that, and consequently, um, from a very early age, had interests in a lot of things that my friends had interested in, had interest in, but not necessarily the same proclivity uh, in terms of being able to 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 do it. So music, right? Like I had a handful of friends that played music, and we had bands in seventh grade and in high school and so on, but. But, uh, you know, painting and drawing and writing and music and all those things were things that I always just did. And I didn't always find the people to connect with that just did it, too. You know? So you had a physical condition which made you the butt of child, some child cruelty and some adult frustration. And as, adult cruelty as well. Yeah. I mean, adults yeah. would say stuff. Okay. Well, we're getting the sound coming in that we are coming into our first break. We'll be right back with actor-director Rob Steffen as we discuss children and adult cruelty uh, and if we should be bringing back racks and torture devices to take care of them. Right here on The Dr. Kevin Show. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Om Times. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Tune in to the Practical Intuitive Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World with me, host Robin Fritz, Mondays at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 Eastern. I'll cover personal and business intuition, animal communication, mediumship, space clearing, past life regression, shamanic insights, energy healing, soul choice, and more, all to help you tap your own intuitive and healing skills. No ifs, ands, or buts. Hi, this is New Age Grammy winner Paul Abgerinos. Thanks for listening to Ohm Times Radio, and please support my peaceful healing music with a purchase at iTunes, Amazon, or wherever you shop for fine music. Just put my name into the search engine. Paul Avgerinos. A, V like Victor, G like George, E-R-I-N-O-S. You can also visit me at roundskymusic.com. 
Thanks for listening, and I'm wishing you the brightest of blessings. To protect his home and family from disaster, Steve used courage, wisdom, and his camera phone. That should do it. Way to go, Steve! By simply taking digital pictures of his family's important documents, Steve can always have them stored safely online, no matter when disaster strikes. Learn other simple ways to protect your home and family before a natural disaster at ready.gov. That's ready.gov. A message from FEMA and the Ad Council. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Dr. Kevin Show here on Ohm Times. I am here today with uh, actor-director Rob Steffen, and we're talking about some of the cruelty that he went through because of health issues as a child. So uh, if you'd like to be part of the conversation, share comments, thoughts, or ideas about either the cruelty of children or how to better deal with things, or how to get our government function, which was our first topic, please feel free to call in at 202-570-7057. Uh, so, Rob, you were highly creative, um, physically challenged because of this diagnosis that gave you a different physical appearance. Um, and you said that children and adults are cruel. Uh, adults obviously have no excuse for their cruelty, what do you think in hindsight? Do you think, you know, we always hear about children being cruel. Do you think children are naturally cruel? Do you think it's a it's a part of our species? Or do you think that this is something that's conditioned into them? I think all those variables can play into it. Um, the circumstances that I was dealing with actually got in the way of me being able to play soccer or being able to be a part of any kind of potential contact sports because the doctors were concerned that let's say that I was to be a goalie if the soccer ball were to be kicked into my stomach, that it could be fatal. And so it ended up excluding me from a lot of things that I really wanted to do in that regard. And it's not a boo-hoo, but, you know, when you're, when you're let's say, between 5 and 10, that's a time when you have a lot of energy and you want to channel it and you want to connect with your friends. And soccer was one of the things that we did in that regard. But to answer your question, uh, I think it depends. I think each circumstance is different. I've, I've seen tremendous cruelty from people in the world, and I've seen tremendous kindness and generosity from people in the world. And uh, it depends on the consciousness of the individual, you know. And in, in the time that I was describing, society is very different. Like, but there are some people today that will, their own sense of, of amusement, take cheap shots at someone. Um, hopefully, we're going to evolve beyond that. But yeah, it's on. So is so you had two things you wanted to take us out of the box with, and we are actually now moving into the next segment. But what's the other thing that you said you had kind of uh, a dual personality thought? Well, I think I said a dual answer thought. Dual answer. I, I wanted to present. Yeah, I wanted to present the notion of you know questioning normal. Is there a normal? I think you answered really eloquently. Um, but, but the idea of children. Um, adults, but children specifically that have, uh, that, that, are, that present to society in a way that appears different. And this could be statistic, it could be Asperger's, it could be ADHD, it could just be a kid with a, 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 a or a funny hair, or any, anyone that presents as different from what would be perceived normal. And what is the value and the, and the challenge behind that? You know, there's value in questions in the status quo. Do you feel that as an actor and a director that 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 gives you a platform to perhaps challenge some of the the misplaced reality that you experienced as a child? And if so, how has that played out? Well, I my answer is absolutely, and it, it's going to play out quite a bit more this year. I have a lot of um, irons in the fire at the moment, and consequently, it's, it's caused a very strong 
um, identification for me personally with the underdog in any level, whether that be Rocky One, whether that be Kramer versus Kramer, whether it be anything that comes out where um, even a book where, where the person has adversarial odds they must overcome. I want to challenge society and challenge people and challenge myself with asking either A, why does this person make a difference trigger you or, or bother you? And B, um, I like to explore the inner life of the person that is really has the courage to be authentic to themselves. And that could be, that's a very broad topic there, but that could be anybody. Yeah, well, you know, there's always a level of uh, self-awareness and self-acceptance that has to be present to take mm -hmm. journeys like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so you, I've you been don't... thinking about it, yeah. Yeah, as, as I'm thinking about it, um, when we talk about normal or we talk about happiness, I mean, I would think it's, it's, a, it's a very fair statement to make. That most everything we don't teach in school and we don't talk about it, we give the emphasis you must be Rob, I think we've I think we're down on your bars again because you've just kind of petered off. I could hear you were sort of staying some stuff. I don't know if we can okay. reposition you. Can you go stage left? <laughs> Try stage right. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely having some difficulty uh, holding on to the signal from where you are. Um, okay. All right, can you hear me okay? Uh, you, you're clear in this. You're, that last sentence was clear. So you were talking about okay. what we we're not teaching in schools, which there's a lot of things that we're not teaching we should be, and a lot of things we are teaching that we shouldn't be. But that's another whole topic. Go ahead. Yeah. So I, I think that the the one statement that I wanted to make is the direct correlation between authenticity. And by that, I mean being true to your preferences. And it's not a narcissistic statement. It's what gives you energy? What makes you happy about being alive? What, what sparks your curiosity? What feeds your mind? And how do you feel compelled to be in this life? And when you, when you answer that every day and you express that, then there is an innate um, power and joy in living. And then when the outside world pushes against that, and it will, I think I'd like to encourage listeners to find the refuge you need to recharge and go back into keeping that commitment. Because if you don't, um, it ends up, you know, causing misalignment, you know, and that can result in, in you know, sleep problems or relationship problems or uh, depression or any kind of things because you, the, the inner voice is there for, your your well-being you know well you know and you've brought up an interesting subject you know my my primary practice for the last now going into 29 years has been as a spiritual coach counselor and catalyst mm -hmm. and one of the things that i would you know as you talk to the listeners about being authentic um is that the listeners also have to be willing to be self-assessing in a, in a way that very few of them, unless they've ever worked with somebody or one, of, one out of a thousand that was raised in a household, one of 10,000 that was raised in a household where this was the, where this was, this was the norm of mm. questioning and things like that. Because, you know, a lot of the times, Rob, people aren't lying nearly as much to you as they are lying to themselves so they can mm -hmm. tell it to you as it's truth. So they yeah. don't know what authentic is. Mm. 
their their false self is so in place and has been put in place by the media, by their social upbringing, by their family, by their church, by whatever, that this faux me uh, is so strong that they don't know that they're they don't they, they really don't know that they're being inauthentic. And if they don't, so, Kevin, go ahead. Well, go ahead. your work, I have my own answer to this question. In your work, what are three things you could advise to whoever's listening now that would be steps towards maybe ex excavating that authentic self, that true self, and also to care for it and nurture it so as to have a sense of completion and empowerment? Well, you know, one of the first, first things you need to do is you need to uh, you need to find two to three people in your life. And if you don't have them, go looking for them that can be lovingly honest with you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that the, the secret is lovingly honest with you because we all got exposed to a ton of critical judgmentalness growing yeah. up. It was it was, uh, I, you know, We've our self worth and self esteem has been under mass attack since the 1950s through the media, because if they don't give yeah. us problems, they can't sell us solutions. Yeah, that's true. So here, you know, the the first thing is is you got to find if you're lucky, you can find two to three people, and they don't even have to be your closest or best friends. Who, if you say, where do you think that who I say I am and how I act doesn't always add up? Mm -hmm. Where am I in conflict with who I say that I am? Mm. Um, well, then my question to the listeners, is, and, and I'm answering this as we, as we listen to you, is, uh, you know, think about these questions. Um, because I'm, I'm definitely uh, at fault with this kind of thing. And I'm thinking about some stuff that's happened recently in my personal life around stating something and then uh, consequently behaving in a way that was a little more convenient or more comfortable. Um, and you know, that, that gap. So uh, anyway. Yeah. Well, and it's, you know, I mean, when I, when I work with people professionally, oftentimes I'm, I'm, I'm pushing beyond the easy, comfortable answers to mm -hmm. what, well, how, why ever you say you're doing it, it isn't about being right or wrong. It's about acknowledging it saying, okay, yeah. In this area of my life, I'm selfish. Okay, who told you that was wrong? Mm -hmm. Maybe that's right. Yeah. Maybe you should be yeah. selfish in that area. This might not be an issue. It was an issue for somebody and they gave it to you, but is it your issue? Do you need to take it on? Wow. Um, you know, um, and then I think it's so interesting. A few years ago, somebody did a uh, pilot for a self-help show uh, that was supposed to be a sitcom. And they had based the, the, the primary character on me and actually asked me to come in and help write the script and shoot in the pilot and stuff like mm -hmm. this. Um, and it, it never went anywhere. It didn't get picked up. But, you know, it was really interesting because, uh, you know, it isn't, it, it, it's about asking the hard questions, but it's also creating the loving space and the sacred space that the hard questions are okay to be asked, mm -hmm. that the judgment mm -hmm. doesn't exist, that the place yeah. where the person can feel vulnerable and have the desire to move forward and step out of all of the traditional and new age cliches that run around mm -hmm. that give you excuses to stay emotionally, spiritually, even intellectually constipated. You know, yeah, I think one of the things. Uh, go ahead. No, go ahead. You were talking about constipation. No, I'm kidding. No. So um, uh, what I was going to say is that um, emotions play such a huge, huge factor in everything that we as people really, really want. And so much of advertisement and the, the modern world is, is about solutions to things that are really emotionally based in my experience. And I think that when you talk about finding a loving space, somebody can lovingly be honest with you. One of the key factors there um, in my experience as a teacher and then you know, also an actor in different things is 
what is the emotional value that is being given to a circumstance? Because if you and I were talking face to face and the emotional value was enjoyment, we enjoyed talking or we respected each other or, or every time we talk or we laugh, I could say something to you that I could never get away with in, in a different context and conversely the same for you, I could say, oh, you know, your hair is thinning or, oh, you've got a pot belly or whatever the thing is. And you could say the same to me, but we could laugh about it because the emotional value is different than uh, – is pleasurable. And so um, I'm just thinking about all this, as you mentioned, emotional constipation and so forth, how um, the modern world is so much about things that distance ourselves from our emotions – and yet plays on the emotional lack of fulfillment to get you to buy the new car or get the, uh, you know, the facelift or whatever it is that you think is going to make you happier. You know, and the whole thing is, again, we go back to this assault that has been happening on America starting in the 50s to make you be convinced that you as you are not good enough. How right. dare you right. think you don't need our deodorant or our perm or our facelift or whatever? And it threatens us with the ultimate, most horrible threat, which is you'll have no love. No one will love you. You'll have no tribe. You will be isolated. You'll be sitting in a room by yourself. Well, let's segue that one into um, different people or even weird people. The word weird weird gets thrown around. I see a lot of kids use the word awkward. If they don't have to answer to a question or they're in a new setting that they're not familiar with, even if it's just a joke that they don't understand, they go awkward, and then that's supposed to dismiss the whole experience. And my belief is life is awkward. Being born is awkward. Dying is awkward. Getting a tooth pulled is awkward. Getting braces is awkward. Going on your first date is awkward. So much in life is awkward. So at what point does that – is that the exception, you know? And I think your point about the big fear of you won't be loved unless plays into the autistic kids or the ADD kids or special needs kids or just weird people, people that want to be really, let's say, eccentric or unusual. The threat is they won't be loved, but what if they are for the reasons – that we're worried about. Well, and that's an interesting thing, and that's one of the places where we have to push, Rob. And that's the sound that says we're on to our next commercial. We will be back after our commercial <laughs> break with Rob Steffen, um, actor, director, uh, and uh, feel free to call in at 202-570-7057 if you'd like to be part of this conversation. And if you don't, Rob and I are having a good time without you, so we're not worried about it. All right. The Real Conscious Connection, Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Hi, I'm Kelly Fox, host and astrologer of The Astrology Show. Each week, I'll give you access to the current transits, which are a valuable tool that provide astrological information to help unlock the potential each of us has. Understanding the stars can help steer us in the right direction to make better informed choices. So if you're wondering what's going to happen in your week ahead, be sure to tune in to The Astrology Show for guidance, Mondays at 9pm Eastern Time. Hi, this is recording artist and composer Yuval Ran inviting you to a voyage through the chakras a new double album of guided meditations to transform your life, a sublime musical medicine for nourishing inner peace and reaching to your higher virtues. 
Get it now at metamindfulnessmusic.com. M E T T A mindfulnessmusic.com. Every day, eight kids and teens are unintentionally killed or injured by loaded and unlocked guns. Learn how to make your home safer at nfamilyfire.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and N Family Fire. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the last segment of the Dr. Kevin Show here on Ohm Times, where we're changing the world, wait for it, one ohm at a time. Here on tonight's show, we have actor-director Rob Steffen. You can find out more about Rob on his uh, Facebook page if you just put in Robert Steffen, or you can come to facebook.com backslash mydrkevin, M-Y-D-R-K-E-V-I-N. We have Rob's brightly smiling face uh, and click links Thanks. to go through and find out more about Rob. Uh, and remember, as a live call-in show, you can I'll post on Facebook or you can call in at 202-570-7057. Rob, you're still there. Yes, sorry, we got back, so here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Well, you know, you made an interesting comment just before we went to break, and it was about awkward, and it was about weird. And, you know, it's interesting because I've been working with ADD and ADHD since the late 90s. Uh, my first book came out on it in, like, 2000, um, and called Managing the Gift. Hmm. And... Uh, you know, and I, I put out there that ADD is part of the evolutionary process, broadening the bandwidth of humanity, not a disease, disorder, or disability. And I've uh, literally spoke all over the world about why we shouldn't be making our children laboratory rats and cash cows. Um, and so, you know, I have, I have some history dealing with kids that fall into the weird, awkward category as decided by the uh, fashion and wisdom sense of middle schoolers. Mm. Always a horrifying, horrifying thought. Um, mm -hmm. And one of the things that I do and I will do and, and my kids have seen me do uh, if I work with them or my adults, because I work with people of all ages uh, about how to unlock their gifts and greatness, um, is that, you know, when somebody says you're weird, and this is what I tell my kids to do as well, I go, Oh, thank you. Thank you for noticing. I appreciate that. How sad it must be for you to not be weird. Hmm. They're like, what? Thinking about huh? something. Yeah. Yeah. Think about something as you as you're speaking. Uh, I have a great affinity for the the early punk movement of the '70s and the '80s, and that I realized part of what drew me to it was number one. Of expression, and number two was doing things for yourself. Whether you wanted to have a band or you wanted to do your own clothing or your own hairstyle or whatever it was, but really, at the core of it all, which ties into the, the label of weird or awkward or any of that, was embracing uh, the whole person. And there's an album called Leather Bristle Studs and Acne, and for a band trying to sell records, kind of an unusual title because here i'm going to sell the fact that i have studs and bristles and acne and i don't care and i'm proud of my imperfections and i'm proud of my awkwardness and i'm proud of my uh you know where i am at yeah that's what i was drawn to is the acceptance of it because society doesn't yeah well, and, you know, one of my big words is always empowerment. And I define the empowerment as the power to be uniquely who, with, who you are yeah. without apology. Yeah. Yep. And it's the apology. You're, 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 you're almost forced to apologize for being different. Like you should apologize for upsetting the apple cart. 
you should apologize for your behavior. You should apologize because you made somebody else uncomfortable with what you said. Was mm-hmm. it your intention to be mean? Was your intention to be cruel? Was it your intention to, um, uh, you know, uh, hurt somebody's feelings? Or was your intention to be honest? And maybe you can learn from the interchange how to be honest and, and not hurt somebody's feelings. But sometimes when you're honest, you hurt somebody's feelings and you can't help it. And lying, which you're told is not acceptable, society tells you to do all the time to be accepted. Yes, it is a quagmire. It's the great paradox. Society says you have to do all these things to be acceptable. And one of the things you must never do is lie. And then we all then what do we do? We put all of our idols, all of our people on that are up on boxes, up on pedestals. We elect them to our government. We put them in places of power. And what are they most known for? Lying. But you're not supposed to do it. It's okay if they do it. So how do we find our way into personal empowerment in a world that accepts lying as long as nobody knows you're lying and basically puts on a pedestal people that are not authentic and people that are puppets and the people that lie as a career when one path to personal power is authenticity and self-acceptance. So, you know, you asked an interesting question and I want to get to, because I see it says here that you are an actor and director, but I don't see it here where it says that you're a writer. And you're a writer, Rob. You know you're a writer. I know you're a writer, but I'm not seeing that you're a writer here. And I'm hoping that some of these exciting projects that you have coming up are things that you've actually written yourself. Mm -hmm. Because you, yeah, okay, good. So um, let's make sure that we go back to your Facebook page and put actor, director, writer. Okay, just, just, I'm just saying. I'm just, you know, I'm bullying you here. So, but it's out of love, so it's okay. Um, I can take it. <laughs> yeah, but the question is where? Where are you going to take it to? Um, but as far as I can go. As far as you can go. You want to know how to change the world? Become 100% who you're here to be. You were born as a gift to the world. And the only way that you're going to give that gift to the world is by being you. When you're you and you are willing to evolve and grow and expand and become more of who you are when you are willing to check in and be disciplined about your intentions and your motivations, when you're willing to put yourself out to the world, you will draw the tribe of people in who are changing the world because they're calling people out on their lies. And, and yeah. you know, so how do you do it? You become and be you. That's how you do it. Yes. As long as you're Absolutely. living the lie of being what somebody else wants, mummy, daddy, society, significant other, whatever misconception you have in your head of who you were supposed to be in any of the roles that you currently play in your life, actor, director, writer, whatever, um, as long as you live in any of those in a lie, you are cheating everybody you come across because you are being less than who you are. But that means you have to love the fact. And one of the big, big new age metaphysical, spiritual pieces of BS is about this becoming into this place that, that, that somehow, that somehow you arrive and not all, not all of the, new age crapola out there. And, 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 and I'm not saying it's all crapola. I mean, that's the category I get put into. And I reserve the right to be full of shit. I tell people that all the time. I, I don't know. I don't know. So if you don't like it, well, you know, stop coming to see me. Don't take my class. Don't buy my book. Don't get my DVD. It's not going to hurt my feelings. I may not be the right flavor for you. It's okay. Um, but but that being but being out there and being in that constant search, the minute you figure out who you are, Rob, the knowledge of it makes you somebody different. So you never arrive. Right. That's exactly it. It's a process that is constantly unfolding. And the interesting thing here also is that as you express 
who you authentically are. Let's say it's a painter or a spokesperson or whatever it is. A race car driver. It's going to lead to the next thing. And then you say, you know what? I actually want to make tires because I think the tires could be better. And now you're a tire spokesperson or CEO or something, and it never ends. And the moment it ends, a part of us dies. So I'm thinking about some talking about authenticity and being who you are in that. And it's funny to say that I, as an actor, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to comment on being authentic. But, but the truth is this. Acting is not wanting to be someone else, and it's not trying to be someone else. Acting is expressing the truth through an imaginary circumstance. So you are, you are more vulnerable and raw and real as an actor if you're doing your work correctly It's more difficult than regular life because it's uncomfortable, but it's more rewarding than regular life because it is a creation and a risk to the ego that someone's going to make fun of you or judge you or whatever. And once you get out on that platform and you jump into the swimming pool before you look if there's water in it, it is literally like hang gliding. It's, It's an absolute thrill. Well, and, you know, my big thing, because I did some acting in my past, um, I I tried to balance it, acting, acting out, acting, acting out, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, is that, um, you know, I, my favorite was always improv. That was oh, one yeah. of my, I, I love improv. Improv is my thing. Yeah. I mean, I've done traditional roles, but improv and sparking off somebody else's creativity and seeing where somebody else can take it and where they do take it and how they get there and how many messages of interchange, social change, um, changing the world to a better place are communicated through humor. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But John Houston has said, at the height of humor or the height of laughter, the universe is flung into a kaleidoscope of new possibilities. I like that. You're going to have to come to the the uh, Dr. Kevin, uh, my Dr. Kevin Facebook page, and you're going to have to type that quote in under your thing and who it came from so that I can uh, sure. pass it around. I always like pass it around a good quote. Um, so we've only got a couple more minutes. You've got a lot of projects on the page. We've varied from the normal way that we do tickets, uh, that we do tickets, that we do the program, the uh, program segments, mm-hmm. um, which is okay, because there's nothing like I like better than jumping the box line. Um, so um, what project are you most excited about that you would like to share with people? Okay, enough about me. What do you think? Um, no, I'm kidding. No. So what I'm really excited is I'm working with the Grammy Award winning producer. We're gonna, we have a meeting at 7 o'clock to talk about a new record label that he is starting with some heavyweights that have been very successful spanning a career of like 30, 40 years. So they've seen all the changes in the record business and uh, the music business. And so we have a meeting at 7. I also have a new manager I'm uh, talking with. I think we're going to work together because it's pilot season right now. And then I'm also writing and directing my own project. And so, um, you know, when when I say uh, actor-director, lots and lots of acting, and I've directed maybe six things uh, prior to moving back to California and also some in Santa Barbara and had a short film in the New York Film Festival. But the stories I want to tell and the writing that I do that you recognize, I want to show. I want to tell the story in a visual medium, and that is something that is in development now. And I also have my debut album of music that's going to drop on my birthday this year, which is May 6th. So lots and lots and lots of good stuff. So when you drop your album and some of these projects have come to more fruition, then you need to reach back out to me and we need to have you back on the show to chat about how some of these things and how they're playing out. And um, I would love to be able to catch up with you in about six months or so um, to, you know, kind of see where all this stuff is, you know, and see yes. how it's evolving you. Yes. Is May available, or does it always fall on a Thursday? Uh, it's a live call-in show, so it's always Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
Okay. Uh, and I don't have any. I've been at this time slot for quite a while now. I mean, I've been at other time slots because I've I've been I've had a radio show for like fourteen years. Uh huh. Um. So uh. So, but uh, there's no plans to change that um right now. Um. I uh, I also am relaunching my TV show because I had a couple of the TV oh, cool. shows that I put on hi hi hiatus. So one of them is Where which is film? about. Uh, I film right out of Nashua, New Hampshire, and I have just moved over to going from studio work to I'm relaunching it, um, that it's all going to be done just through uh, social media. I have chosen to put a studio in my own house and kind of walk away from some of the constraints of going to a, to a studio that had rules that didn't always work for me. Yeah, I think your opinion so often talking with someone about it right now and if i can get to the east coast we can do something it'd be fun to do something improv like an improv show where we have a a, a hat with a bunch of like buzzwords that we, we predetermine and then we pull stuff out of the hat and we play that absolutely and we can always interview you, you via social media uh, but we'll talk you stay in touch All rob right. i want to hear about what you're going thank you so much for being on the dr kevin show thank you sir have a good day you too.